you're starting at the ground level, it's important to understand the foundation before building. Knowing you'll have ups and downs and unforeseeable challenges prepares you to endure anything along that journey. The next step is working together with a like-minded group to reach a common goal. After those two steps, you're on your way to accomplishing things you couldn't imagine. That's where football meets life. The foundation of football has directly correlated to helping young athletes develop great endurance to build a strong foundation for life. In a state where football is an afterthought, in a city where the game isn't celebrated the way it should be, there are still some people that understand the importance of its impact and respect its foundational value. Pray for us. We know Western New York is not the most integrated place. You know, it's one of the top segregated places in the country. And one of the great things about Canisius is they don't hire the political hire. I'm a public school teacher and they have to hire the science teacher over the more qualified coach because he's a science teacher. And I think that's what cripples some of these schools, because you have to hire not necessarily the right guy, and Canisius, they don't put that to play. They take the best coach, the best person. We were over at my house, we were just having a meeting, and I'm like, wow, we got a full black staff. And we started talking about some of the things we couldn't do. And it's a shame that we got to talk about that, where a white coach can throw down a hat and be demonstrative, and he's passionate where you do it as a black man, it's ghetto, it's classless, it's unprofessional. You look at the difference between Nick Saban yelling at a referee, uh, you know, you take Mike Tomlin doing the same, and it has a different, you know, they play different in people's minds. But the biggest thing that I feel comfort in is the players and what we've proven to the players, which matters to us the most is that guys know how to coach, and most of all, they love these kids. All these guys can get on the board if they have an idea and show something, and they have the ideas that they have are thought out, not just, hey, we need to blitz. Okay, blitz where? I think that's a strength of Kenesha's football, is that we have a large and diverse coaching staff, which many high schools, especially here in Western New York, don't have, and we have guys that themselves come from all different backgrounds, which helps our team regardless of the background they come from, from a player standpoint, be able to relate to a coach and develop a relationship with at least one of the coaches, hopefully all of the coaches. You know, this school has the, the foresight of saying, hey, not only does our school need to be diverse, our coaching staff needs to be diverse. And the bunch of guys we have now, if you've been around, I mean, the fun that we have, is, is amazing. But the seriousness, when it's time to get to work, we get to work. And I think that's the, the greatest thing that we have is the camaraderie, is the amount of trust we have. Canisius has really grown administratively and collectively of embracing many backgrounds from diverse socioeconomic, racial. Um, and I think that allowance or open up to other kids who 20 years ago wouldn't get an opportunity to get this great education. What a great experience. I think football brings people together. You get kids from the inner city and kids from the suburbs and you bring them together and it's, you realize that we're not that different. This city doesn't take football serious, mainly because it's not a football town. It's a Bills town. People care about the Bills, but they send their son to play soccer, hockey, lacrosse, whatever, and never football. Western New York sets it up that way. A lot of times kids with sports, they get scholarships, uh, networking, they build the skills they need to succeed in life. When I look to hire here, 
I look for if kids played sports that's team building, it's coachable, it's the, the will to succeed. Uh, we definitely missed out compared to down south. When, you know, being from the south, it's, it's, it's a different way of life down there. Friday is Friday night and it's go time. And because I do think that there's not enough football playing colleges around, you don't get that environment. I mean, everything starts Friday night lights, moving up to college and into the pros, and I don't see it here. Overall, West North doesn't think they have the talent or they're just not as successful over time. There's a lot of unpolished diamonds here. And we do have good football players in Western New York. I've seen too many great athletes who have played in this in Western New York, but they end up not playing at schools where they're being coached properly. I think that starts the problem is that, you know, we'll play a school with some good athletes, we'll just out coach them because, you know, their coaches don't understand gap control. They don't understand zone scheme blocking. They don't understand how to teach a correct route. And, you know, I think it starts with the coaching and then you start moving to the parents and then, you know, it's just not as serious on the high school level, and it's bad. After 17 years with Canisius, Brian Gorman is promoted to interim head coach of the varsity football program, and he's looking to leave a legacy of his own. I don't know what it was about the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I would find myself, and my father still tells me about this. I was distracted in school drawing game plans up as opposed to listening to math. Since I've been younger, I just never thought anything was more important. So I'm doing what I've set out to do. Um, and it doesn't matter the level, it's just, it's through the sport that I love. Coach Brian Taylor, I am originally from New Orleans, Louisiana, St. Augustine High School. I played uh, college at Laney College, which was on Last Chance U. Then I ended up at Oregon State University. I played running back there. Um, I think I even led the Pac-10 in, in all-purpose yards my junior year. Went on to uh, be a free agent with the Chicago Bears. Uh, coached by a teammate of my dad's, Mike Ditka. My dad played with the Bears in the 60s with Mike. They ended up moving me to defensive back. Never played defensive back before in my life. Um, then went to the Bills and went to the 49ers. And, and after five years, uh, tore my knee up and that was it. I remember 15 years ago looking at our schedule with Rich and seeing that we had three or four homecoming games scheduled for us, which is an indication of that's an easy win. My first year here was 2007. Um, I think Kanisha that came off of like a bunch of one and eight, oh and something records. And we were building this program by scratch. And, you know, I'm so proud to say I was part of, you know, that beginning where, you know, we came in and we were losing to, losing to St. Francis 49, nothing. And losing to teams like Canadagua, 56 to seven, and we took our growing pains, but we built the program up. And by 2000, 2012, that first undefeated season, and you know, number one in the state, to the 2014 team that was nationally ranked, to you know, the state championships, to you know, everything that we've done here, setting a culture, which has been just you know, amazing. football for the game winner Kinesis quarterback Tyler Baker connects with Nick McMillan wow. for the game winning New York State Championship Cardinal Hayes DB you got Mars what a catch by Nick McMillan you know that kid is just special you know he's a special receiver I just I just knew my receiver was gonna go up and get I, he told me before the play he's like Tyler trust me man I got you I got you and I, I believed in him I threw it up he caught it to go for two at the end, it was a tough decision for me. When your senior captain comes over and grabs you by your coat and says, give me the ball, I won't let you down, you got to give him the ball. When I saw the ref's hands go up with zero seconds on the clock, one of the, one of the best feelings I've ever had. This is surreal. This is crazy. <laughs> this is why I came to Canisius, to win a state title. It's insane. I can't believe it. We've worked so hard this last month, and I could not be prouder of a group of kids and coaches. Just very proud of our people. It was definitely a sad day when Rich announced he was stepping down. Certainly understand. Rich always talked about family first. He loved this school. He built this program to where it is. Rich was just so integral to how things worked here. 
He's great with people. He wins in the classroom. He's a, he's a big figure here in the school. So I shed tears that day. Rich also would say no person, even the head coach, is bigger than the program. And Rich stepping aside was a sad time and a sad moment. But what he and all of us have built over the last decade, we always had the expectation that it could last regardless of who was in place. And so the, ch the transition was pretty much a, 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 an easy transition for us, keeping the staff in place, uh, elevating Brian from JV to varsity. So it was sad to see Rich go, but the program goes on. When Rich left, no staff members left. So the transition was really easy, leaning on Brian Taylor, Bryce Hopkins, and Tom Coppola, John Miller, the guys that have walked these shoes for many years before. The transition from Coach Robbins to Coach Gorman has been pretty smooth, obviously. Uh, Coach Gorman's been in the system for a long time. So it's, we just kind of picked up right where Coach Robbins left off. At Canisius, we want to just keep things going along in a steady fashion. I think at Canisius, they just have a different standard from every other place in Western New York. I think maybe the past 10 years, I think it's maybe close to 20 D1 football players now, which is more than the rest of Western New York combined. At Kinesis, they've built a tradition where they win every year. And besides that, just school-wise, it's one of the top academic schools. People go there to succeed. People just want to win. And people that want to win go to Kinesis and work harder than everyone else in Western New York. They have a common goal. They have an expectation that's placed upon them, and they go out and execute it. There's no other kids in Western New York that work harder than Kinesis kids academically and football-wise, and I'll hang my hat on that. So I played at Louisville. I played with the Dolphins, Chargers. I've been around. Just trying to get you guys better today. We're going to go over the simple stuff of the game. Then we're going to get a lift in after, and it should be a good workout. Effortless. Call us aggressive intelligence. Hustle my artists, and I'm the executive boss. It's fine, Connecticut. Come from the block with an etiquette. It's never a lot of the fellowship. We just survive in the elements, but I have my eyes on the And you're right into it. You know what I'm saying? That's just a slow down step, and then it's one, two. I'm trying to get better. 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 I'm biggest thing we needed and that could lead us right to the state championship. That's what we're hoping. We got a tough schedule ahead and we got to be intense throughout it and be focused and be ready for it. There's leaders on this team. Nick Siriello is a true leader. I played a year of youth football with a couple of the guys and the dads ended up inviting a few of us who were on the team that year to Canisius. It's been a year now since I transferred and it's a completely different game. When I came to Canisius, I boosted my average by 10%. I played the best football I ever have. I've just excelled in so many different areas and it was completely the best decision I could have made. Natural born leader, love his style of play, runs around, hits anything moving. Just smart players, just study, really good study habits. This year I'm hoping to accomplish a state championship and simple, that's what everyone hopes to accomplish, but I find that the, the team we've put together this year and the time and the effort and the sacrifices that we've put in that we have a really good shot. I think this team has such great potential to make the states win states. I don't think, I can't see us losing a game. We have great chemistry, and each, and each player plays a role, and I think we're just going to be great this season. Braden is a big physical player. He's been a varsity player for the past three years, and we're expecting a lot out of Braden. I kind of just want to make a name for myself. I don't want to, every time people think of linebackers, they think of either Mason Hoos or CJ Oslin, and I kind of just want to, People think of my name when they think of it too. I want Nick and I to be great. Lamar Thomas, Marmar, can do it all. Uh, utility player. Uh, you put him at running back, you can put him at receiver. He'll block for you. He's a kick returner. He's a safety, smart player, very instinctive. Lamar is a great football player, but a better kid. Durrell Hamilton is a dog. He's just a go-getter. Big, physical, violent player. Tyler Baker's the most magical player I've ever coached here at Canisius High School. And I have coached Quadri Olison, Ryan Hunter, TJ Wheatley, Sean Brady, just so many great football players in this program. 
There has never been anybody more electric than Tyler. Tyler Baker, three-year starter, state champion. Uh, he's a winner. He's a competitor. I don't think there's any boy more competitive than Tyler Baker on this team. If we can keep it together, uh, stay in brotherhood, and that can take us to the state championship, we can probably end up with another ring. You know, kids have transferred in mainly because it's very competitive here. You know, the football environment is competitive. It should be. You know, you, you want to send your son to score three touchdowns a game and play a bunch of kids his size who aren't athletic and good? Fine. But you really haven't taught him anything, I don't think. You haven't taught him much about if you want to play football and you want to play it at the highest level, you go to the schools where it's played at the highest level, and guess what? There's going to be competition. You can't shy away from competition, and I think this city doesn't take football in that matter, or sports in general. So at first, I was supposed to come to Canisius. I shadowed in eighth grade, and then I decided to stay at North, and they put me up as a freshman on varsity. And I started at cornerback, I started at slot, and I was doing my thing. I was a man on campus. I was the fourth freshman on varsity. One of them who made that history at Will North was the tight end, Rob Gronkowski. I was also ranked as a top freshman in Western New York by the Buffalo News, alongside Jimmy Scott. The following year, I had the most rushing yards in the season. I had the most all-purpose yards in the game. I was first team all league. I just been putting so much work into this. Rod is probably the most explosive player we got on this team. Rod can play anywhere on this defense. Right now he plays Sam linebacker, but we can line him up at corner, we can line him up at safety. I can put him at middle linebacker, uh, our Mike or our Will. He's our nickel. He can play anything. Make sure you got everything dropped. All right. Yo. I got a seven up pound cake, caramel pound cake, and cookies and cream. And I need my uh, sides. Put this on the refrigerator. What's that for? Three o'clock. There you go, man. Guys, all good? Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Hope you enjoy. I'll be over to check in in a second. It'll be about two years. We've been open uh, once October hits. And I'll just be up here. I used to be in the back cooking the food and stuff, but I'll be up here just working up front, uh, helping with the orders, answering the phones, you feel me, and just getting stuff done. You feel me? Got to deal with the people and stuff. Being disciplined here and just, it helps change over to the football field. And I feel like that's the cheat code for life. Like, it'll help you just better yourself. Just working at the, uh, my parents' restaurants, I feel like that helped like, me be like, more disciplined. From that, I feel like if we like, translate that over to the season, that can help us just be successful and just win more games and just be a team. I feel like we're not limited to one guy. We got four guys, five, six guys that can catch the ball and take it 40 yards of the house. So we have a lot of talent at the, the receiver position. Our receivers, are unbelievable. Michael Doctor, Josh Filion, Antonio Morgan, Brett Papke. These are four hardworking guys. And below them, there are kids that, if they're on any other public school, they're your starting X receiver. They're your starting Z receiver. The way New York State was this year, and, and it's very disappointing, uh, the way football is treated in New York State, and I'll put that on record, is that, you know, you had a week of, you had a week of camp. You didn't have your normal two weeks. So the, you know, we spent a week of camp preparing for McQuaid and their formations and their plays, and it was just not, you know, I was happy to do that, but when they canceled, and you know, there's a lot of talk of why they canceled. To me, it doesn't matter. From what I hear, they had a chance to play us, and they didn't. I think that there was some people behind the scenes that didn't want to necessarily play us, if you want me to be real. And I know that there are some things that are out of their control. And we have a great relationship with McQuaid. We have much respect for that program. They're our, they're our brothers, they're a Jesuit school. It was not the best thing to do. And I have a lot of anger towards Section 5, towards McQuaid, towards the way that now that I hear how things really went, there was a lot of deception behind the doors of who voted, what coach didn't want to. So. I would love to play McQuaid again to make up for that because I'm angry that our kids lost a game and they got a game and they got a game with a real weak opponent. So if you can't see it now, I'm not happy with McQuaid. You can put that on record. People think Canisius is this, you know, just powerhouse sitting with a bunch of division one recruits. These are kids from, from, you know, Western New York. Even the state championships we won was just, you know, 
with kids who just want to play football and who are coachable. And I think where it's lost in this whole thing with, you know, McQuaid canceling and teams in Buffalo area that don't want to play us, the city wants to see a Canisius versus Lancaster, Canisius versus Orchard Park, St. Francis versus Orchard Park, because, you know, those are big games. Those are marquee games. I think McQuaid missed that, that people want to see two Jesuit schools playing each other. And I think that that only helps the kids. But that's why we're in Ohio and Massachusetts and Pennsylvania playing games, because I think the kids deserve to be able to play against top competition. And I think this city kind of shies away from it. It's like, you know, you go to Canisius or St. Francis, you know, your kid could be sitting the bench and, well, as your kid competed. This, I, I still think football is a, a very good way of looking at life still to this day. I still believe that. Adversity, teamwork, um, culture, system, uh, process, all these cliches that we use comes from football. I truly believe that. Is Addison senior? Yeah. Okay. He's like, he's going to pit, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, it'll be a good game anyways. Uh, it should be fun. It should be hot out. I'm going to get sunburned again. <laughs> That's why I hate Lap Cali. It's always too long. But, um, no, I think it's going to be really reliant on Ream and Ham. Because mm -hmm. the, there are a lot of speed on their team. Yeah. So if they don't keep contained, then it's just, that's the game. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's so different because we usually just eat in silence. Mm. We don't usually talk. Just mentally preparing for the game. Speed up some little kids. I'm going to go make some highlight hits. I'm done. I can't eat this one. Too nervous. You fucking ready? So ready. After the cancellation of the McQuay game, Canisius is looking to take all of their frustrations out on Maritime Health Sciences. The Crusaders' number one priority defensively is to shut down Division I wide receiver Addison Copeland. And offensively, Tyler Baker is looking to put on a show. Hey, Grandma. Yeah. You know how far you are? So the first game versus Maritime, I was, I was a little nervous. I'm, I'm nervous going into every game. Uh, got ready, got ready to the car, totally forgot my jersey. It was, it was kind of funny, but at the same time, I was a little nervous that um, I was going to let my team down and not have a jersey. So in warm-ups, I was wearing number 22. I look in your eyes. I look in these coaches' eyes. We're ready. We're ready because you know what? We're special. And you know what we can do? We can show how special we are as a family, together, as one, on that football field. You feel me? Yes, sir. So let's talk about values of moments, right? You will never <laughs> underestimate the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. I don't care what kind of car you drive, what job you have, what title you have. When it's your time, you're going to want more time. And when it's your time up there to see whatever God you pray into, it's about the memories. I promise you. All right? You may not realize it now, but as grown men and as coaches and as guys that love you, genuinely love you as sons, let's do this together and let's make the freaking memory. You know I mean? Our goals are very clear cut. Win our division, state championship. That's what you come to Canisius football for. Today is the start of a war. This is one battle of many to a state championship. Today is a war, down and dirty, violent, out to kill. My linemen, my big men, you are my fortress. You are my barricade, you protect. My linebackers, you are the cannons to destroy and destruction. My QBs, you are my general. You lead and you bring this team to a victory. My wideouts, you are my soldiers. You are in enemy territory, down to kill. My safeties and DBs, you are my snipers. You are shooting down every play for a kill shot. Do you hear me? Yeah!
I was going to score on the first play, and I did. And great blocking by all my teammates. It was a great play. It was a great call. Tyler is so magical with his feet. His football intelligence is through the roof. And the amount of work that him and Tom Coppola put in, people don't see, but you see the result on Saturdays and Friday nights. The Crusader defense is putting a beating on the Maritime Falcons, establishing early dominance. First game was just kind of an opening up, just seeing how our team is and seeing if we could actually execute in game and see how we all clicked and played together. Tyler Baker is putting on a show from the opening snap. Baker drops back, he's rolling out. Oh, you got Antonio. Bang, he hits Antonio Morgan for a touchdown. They have a division one receiver. And obviously as a defensive coordinator, you want to take that away. I mean, you got to take him out the game, make the quarterback or someone else beat you. I mean, you, you'll be foolish to let a guy like um, Addison beat you. The kids bought into it. They were extremely excited, obviously, you know, to be hitting someone else. And I thought they executed well. Like Coach T told us, he told us if we were up, you got to celebrate. We were all in defense. We were having fun. It was going great. So uh, in the end zone, we all did like uh, a group photo. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like this. I've already had You read that play, bro, like a fuck. <laughs> My offseason work really showed coming into that first game, and obviously all my teammates too. Uh, we were really well prepared, and we knew we had to execute every play, and that's what we did. Junior Mikey Doctor joins the party, catching a long bomb from Baker, putting the score at 35-0. Hey, that's it, T. There's Maritime and a few other schools that I have the utmost respect for in the city of Buffalo because they are willing to play us every year. So Coach Parker will always get my highest regards because he understands that iron sharpens iron. Hand off to Lamar Thomas. He breaks a tackle, makes another man miss. He's off into the end zone for another Canisius touchdown. We're having a really good game. We're playing well. We're having a lot of fun, but we know the rest of the season won't be like this, and we got to keep the intensity up all game. And the route continues. This defense is showing great promise to begin the season. They're really looking like a state championship team. You look at our defensive goals, we hit almost 70% of them, which is, which is pretty good. As the first game of the year, we had to go prove that we were, were better than them, that we had to come together as a team. We had been practicing together and everything, but it, it was, was the first challenge that we all had together. What a move by Baker. He's looking like the best QB in New York State this afternoon, delivering another strike to Philly on. Now, we told you, I've been telling you since camp started, everybody's gonna have to play. Some of you guys are about to see if you've been paying attention to your techniques, if you know the defenses, if you are getting to the ball. Hey, look, the standard is the standard. There's a zero on the board right now. Keep that damn zero on the board. I don't care who's in there. We're going to run the same defenses. Stay at it. Get to the ball, strip the ball, make the interceptions. Do your job, fellas. I don't care who's in there. I'm gonna, the expectations are the same, the exact same. So if you've been practicing like you should, you've been paying attention like you should, we talk about middle reps. We're about to see right now how many of you guys have been taking these middle reps, have been looking at the notes, knowing what to do, knowing what not to do, knowing your techniques. We're about to see, and we're gonna let you guys go. We're not gonna hand you. There's no stop in the middle of a play to get you uh, a line right. So for all you guys, it's on you going forward, right? Yes, sir. So the first half, we it was pretty dominant first half. And second half, we wanted to get some more guys in there. Obviously, we got five really good running backs that we all want. We want to get everyone the ball, try to figure out who's gonna be that main feature back for the rest of the season. Let's go, Reed! Outside! Outside, Reed! Outside!
got my first career touchdown ever in high school. It was electric. Yo, I was. I'm. He kicked a good buck. Nice job, nice job. It's one battle. Yes, we sir. just won. Sunday, start your film. We're on to the next fucking battle. Yeah. I got the keys. Fuck. Oh, wait. Damn it. I don't have the keys. Damn, I forgot the keys. <laughs> That's so sad.